and musically complex, writing distinctively earthy songs, hymns, and spirituals that defy genre boundaries. His songs remind you of folk melodies with Celtic, bluegrass, classical, and Latin American influences. He brings something rare to the musical scene, and for this, he has garnered three Gospel Music Association Dove Awards. Let's enjoy Fernando Ortega's first set today. Morning sun and morning glories pouring down the hill. Through my window, I can feel the ocean breeze. Noisy sparrows fill the oak tree. Swallows can't stay still And in the glad commotion Lord, you speak to me If rain clouds come Or the cold winds blow You're the one who goes before me In my heart I know That this good day It is a gift from you is turning in its place because you made it too. I lift my voice to sing a song of praise on this good day. Fishing boats are leaving. Seagulls follow just above the water. I will wait until the sunset brings them home again. Breaking lines and anchors in the harbor. If rain clouds come or the cold winds blow.
Another sleepless night I'm turning in my bed Long before the red sun rises In these early hours I'm falling again Into the river of my world Fernando Ortega has continued to amass new fans as he's toured with the likes of Amy Grant and performed alongside such leading authors as Chuck Swindoll and Anne Graham Lotz. Recently, Terry Black sat down with Fernando to catch up on his story. Fernando, so many of us have been blessed with your music through years. You have such a glorious song, voice, writing. 
How did it all begin? Did you always start singing? When did you start singing? Yeah, I think I remember singing and, and felt like it felt good to do that. Like okay. in my voice, it felt like a, physically it felt good. When I was a first grader, um, really? singing on the swings, I would, all those other kids probably thought I was so weird, <laughs> but I would just sing, sit on those swings on the playground and just sing like crazy, really loud. Really? And, so yeah. you had a good voice ever since you were a child? Well, I don't know that it was good. I just, I, I, it just felt like, yeah, it felt cathartic to sing. It mm -hmm. felt, uh, it made me happy to sing. So mm -hmm. since I was a little kid, I, you know, I grew up uh, playing piano. And um, so all the kids knew I was a, a music kid. Okay. Yeah. So music in your family, your parents? Somebody was just asking that the other day. My parents have beautiful voices. My parents are both in their 90s now. So 90s? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. What a legacy that is. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I remember driving around in my dad's 57 Ford uh, up through New Mexico, you know, when we would go on these family trips, singing uh, the three, my, four, my three siblings, and I would sing melodies, and my parents would harmonize. Oh, my goodness. So, you know, and we grew up in the Presbyterian Church with okay. hymnals, so I think that's where I learned... Uh, to follow notes, you know, mm -hmm. like if the notes were, went up, my voice went up, and, and I learned to sing harmonies through, through hymnals, you know. So you started very young with your parents and your um, brothers and sisters. Now, do any of, anybody in, follow your path in terms of music as well? My brother has a band uh, called Wagogo, and they're really popular in New Mexico, okay. and they're really good musicians. They really, they just sound fantastic. Uh -huh. right? So he sings and he writes songs, plays the guitar. He's a lot more of a rocker than, okay. than I am. Well, then, as you've gone a different path, then, in terms of you followed your passion for God, how did that come to play for you? Uh, being raised in the church, I was always, uh, you know, aware of the Bible and the biblical narrative, Christ's life, and the Old Testament narrative leading up to Christ, but sort of rejected my faith when I was, I'd say, 12 or 13. I found mm -hmm. that... that those stodgy Presbyterian services so <laughs> repulsive. So wow. I went and looking up for my own thing, ended up in a Pentecostal church okay. uh, when I was 15. And I believe that was where I came to Christ. You mm. know, um, uh, I, I was so intrigued and moved by the, the power and the, the pulse of that, of that, of those services, you know, and, um, uh, sadly the church sort of you know, came apart uh, oh, okay. uh, when I was Sorry. a later teen, and then I became a Baptist. <laughs> so it was <laughs> completely opposite, right. and then uh -huh. and then slowly made my way uh, back to, I think, more of a liturgical setting. Mm -hmm. You know, similar to my roots as a Presbyterian. Right. But I was really glad to have the the Pentecostal background because mm -hmm. it seemed like it was sort of freeing, I guess. Right. You know, the the ability to, to use your body as as an instrument of worship as well. You know. Oh, and that along with that, you've been. You are still a worship leader right now in New Mexico. New Mexico. That's and so, but not only now, but you've served in worship leaders in different organizations mm -hmm. as well. Um, how does that being a worship leader? How do you invite people into the presence of God? How does that come about for you? Gosh, that's a. I think there's so much thought that goes into finding songs that you know. This is a criteria for me, right. finding songs that point away from the self mm -hmm. and extol the goodness and, and the virtues of God. Mm -hmm. um, and so, because so many of the songs I think end up being sort of self-conscious right. and sort of bringing the attention like uh, back to the self. But I look for those songs that point away from the self. And you've written so many songs like that. How did writing songs come about for you? Um, I think there was a, for me, an epiphany that uh, when I, I was leading worship in this church that, that was sort of loose in their, in their theology. Mm -hmm. I think it, it, the services became sort of a, a um, uh, like an entertainment show, I okay. guess. Sure. So it right. was a great church. It was really wonderful. Right. But mm -hmm. I, I, um, I started looking for more of a historical mm -hmm. uh, context and, and um, and then I started reading great books. My first one was East of Eden by Steinbeck and, and then um, several other books that, that made me interested in words and how beautiful language can be. Mm -hmm. And so then I took some poetry classes at a local college and started writing there. And that just led into songwriting for me. Well, so you've written countless songs. And then one of the things I've been enthralled with has been you've taken hymns and you've made them 
what it, what's a better word for it? They're revived in a way. Yeah, maybe revived. I think what I did for that congregation that, uh, where, where, you know, we were actually singing uh, often secular songs during the, during the mm -hmm. service, um, I wanted to make these hymns, like Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing was the first mm -hmm. I ever took, Holy, 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 mm -hmm. uh, and make them accessible to this congregation. Most of those people did, were not even aware of that music. Oh my. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, simplifying them, making them accessible for guitar, um, but with, without altering melodies or rhythms of melodies, mm -hmm. that was a big deal for me. Well, you, so. I mean, it's, very, it's obvious that you're very passionate about music and writing, and, and even now you have a brand new project the, on, about Easter. Mm -hmm. It's called The Crucifixion of Jesus, mm -hmm. and it's the first in a series. Um, mm -hmm. So hopefully the next record will be The Resurrection of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then I'll do um, Pentecost, uh, and then into... Uh, Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, and then into Lent. So by the end, I'll probably be 106 by the time I finish <laughs> uh, recording all these things. But you know, well, does that, like does it God just sort of download it, or do you have to do a lot of research into pre you know preparing for these cantatas? Aren't these cantatas, or you call no, them works? I, I think they're more like little liturgical settings that can okay. either be used. You know, you could have a small group that was taking communion together oh, okay. and, and and listen to this recording mm -hmm. that I just made. Um, they're sort of like devotional or meditation, single meditations, but they are in, a, in, the, in the big context, I, I imagine it being sort of cantata-like. Mm. And, and the, the, the templates I've used are, are like Bach uh, and Bach, St. John and St. Matthew Passion and, and the Easter cantata of Bach as well, Brahms, mm -hmm. I don't know, all those things are, are inform these things. That it just, that's what, you, are, you rely on that to help as you create and craft this work that you have. And yeah, and you said, does God download them? I believe that there's that, you know, divine mm -hmm. um, inspiration, but boy, do I struggle with the writing of these things. They don't just flow out of me. They, mm -hmm. It takes forever. This project about killed me. <laughs> so, anyway. Well, I know that it's a blessing. And, and you know, as all of your music and all that you do, I can tell that you desire for all of us to draw closer to God. And I just, I just thank you for what you have struggled with writing music in terms of that it's just a blessing to all of us because not only in your struggle, we have such effortless, beautiful words that we can worship. And I mm. thank you for that. Oh, thanks for saying that. Yes, that means yeah. a lot. Well, thank you so much for your time today, uh, it's too. It's a pleasure.
Thank you for joining us for more than a song. We would love to hear from you. Contact us at family at ctvn.org or call us and we will pray with you for the Holy Spirit to move on your behalf. Until next time, keep looking for the message behind the music and listen for the new song he sings over you. I'm Denise Graves and I'll see you next week.
Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.